Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another week of Xbox Live Indie Games. This week, we've got seven games to look at that were released between April the 27th and May the 3rd, 2014. We're starting off with Dem S Blue Partisan. Now, Dem S has a, has a bit of story, has a bit, a bit of text, and uh, you, while I usually do not just read the text straight off the screen, I kind of want to make an exception for Dem S Blue Partisan. I just kind of really want to say this out loud, so let's start. On one occasion, the aggressor from the universe invaded to the Earth, and the Great War broke out. Zap. Although the human race paid the great sacrifice, the aggressor was turned down. However, the human race can't cross the sea as before, and they can't fly away to sky in the universe as before in exchange for the human race's victory. About 60 years after. Although there was a country here once, the nucleus disappeared for the Great War. The country has been divided in many countries after the end of the war. Humans lost a number of materials and techniques, but they survived by supplemented with materials and technology of aggressor left on the ground. Although it was in the limited range, humans were in it was moving ahead the way to revival steadily. And it went to the way which fights for the struggle for supremacy of the ground. So that's the backstory to Demas Blue Partisan. Now that that's cleared up, let's game start. Let's, uh, let's pick stage one decoy. There still is a little bit more story before the actual level begins. Let's go through that. Can away destination? It takes about 20 minutes, even if we go straight as it is. Commander, there is not a place hidden because our route is a road in this wilderness for a long time either. It has understood. Remainder of weapons in car? The missile is all spent, and it is the end that Gatling also loads as it follows. The bomb set to the bridge for the four stays of misfire. The bullet is little the reminder. Our fate is exhausted here. This luggage... I will try stall for time by Dem B. Wait! Dem B can't be used in the actual combat yet. Uh, we are running away to carry this, research data, and machine parts. It is unbelievable to use Dem B as a decoy. However, if we don't anything, we are annihilated. The person, person who was testing this armor is me until now. I try to frustrate enemies. Even the enemy range is five minutes. Decide early without quarreling. It has understood. We entrust our fate to you. Doctor, please prepare it. The unavoidable in order to survive. Return safely. No problem, Doctor. These weapons are sufficient to I is routing the enemies. I'll defeat enemies and catch up soon. And that begins level one of Dem B Blue Partisan. We're controlling Dem B, and we are attempting to frustrate the enemies, which is what we do. It's what Commander does in Dem B. Dem B, however, is the prototype, so it's unthinkable that we're using it in such a manner, but. Enemy range was five minutes, so, I mean, we didn't have too much choice. What else could we have done? We would have been Annihilate either way. Well, hopefully, enemy does not get hands on Dem B. You could only think about what the aliens would do with that in their hands. And I guess we're fighting aliens, but... Well, actually, no, we're not... No, the aliens are dead, aren't they? We're fighting other sects of humans, I think, is how the story went. Re okay, so let's retry game and player max shield. Yeah, I think that's how the the story went. That's humans fighting against humans. The aliens, which caused the collapse of civilization, are all dead. They're they're gone. Through the victory of human of humanity. Well, you can see how Dem B plays. Dem B is a shmup. Vertical scrolling. 
they destroy enemies and they drop gold and we pick it up. It's kind of how this goes. And honestly, I was kind of a lot more interested in the cutscenes. I want to know more about this, this story. This involved lore of Dem B Blue Partisan. Hmm, the source of mines is near. It seems to control a surrounding surveillance plane. We should destroy it. Well, I think Dem B has been doing a good job so far of frustrating the enemies. Except we have to retry game. Yeah, this, uh, this, even though this much larger ship has so many guns, it's no match for Dem B. We could see why we were trying to protect it so much. Stage clear. However, when we go to the next stage... Okay. I defeated Pursuit Platoon. It consented. The rest of enemy troops are near. Join us right away. Help! And then next stage begins. Okay, so I think that's enough for Denby Blue Partisan. We can see that there is an, a very involved backstory to this game. And we can only imagine what happens to the pilot, the commander of Denby Blue Partisan. Did his allies get away? Are the aliens really dead? Or will they come back and will humanity have to unite under the banner of Dem B Blue Partisan in order to fight them off once again? I'm sure there are thrilling twists to come. But that's it for right now, for Dem B Blue Partisan. Our next game comes from 3T Games. They've made Crystalloid. You might, you might remember 3T Games from last week. Uh, they made a couple of games. One was a clone of Matic Miner. The other one was a game that people inform me, uh, just ripped sprites from Harvest Moon. It's a platformer called Legend of Max. And this time, 3T Games have made an Arkanoid clone. That, the, the bat might actually be the sprite from Arkanoid? No, that seems like a little too high res. Very similar, though, but... Oh, oh. oh. I think this, that thing, I'll lose points if I touch the flashing thing. Well, in any case, it's Arkanoid. You know how that plays. And so far, I have not really seen any, anything that would shake it up. Well, those blocks do fall when we hit them and we die, and we die if they touch, if we touch them. And that gray one's invincible. Not doing a whole lot to try to try to make things exciting, and there's not really I mean not even any music or anything. I mean, it plays like a competent Arkanoid game. You don't really have anything wrong with, with the gameplay, I guess. But I'm quite sure that we've seen better Arkanoid slash breakout games on x in the past. Yep, we're getting there. Making that hole in the, in the roof and gonna get that ball up in there. Well, I mean, we might actually destroy all the blocks before we can do that. Let's get, yeah. This is a trial version. You can tell it's a trial version from the flashing text on the top. If you didn't know, it was, uh, this is indeed the demo. All right, it got up there. Oh, it only destroyed one. Okay, two, three. All right. I just have to take the points hit to get the ball.
I mean, it's crystal. Okay, this is you probably don't need to see this anymore. I would assume it's crystalloid. Actually, I just realized crystalloid is is it's based on arkanoid. That yeah, that's that's quite that's clever. I did not get that until right now. Maybe it's not that clever. I guess I'm almost done with the stage, though. Well, oh, there we go. It's round cleared. Right, go on the round two. I, I guess we don't need to see any more. This was crystalloid. You can see exactly what it is. Software and what a treat! Ex Let's what a treat x Blake has for us this week, as the Undead Syndrome 2 has been released. The sequel to the horrifying Undead Syndrome, and look how scary this is right away. I am frightened. I can't... Oh, that is just as ear-piercing as ever. We remember the original Undead Syndrome, and this looks a lot like it. Well, I guess there's no way around it, but I guess we're going to get spoilers for what might have happened at the end of the Undead Syndrome 1, since this appears to be a direct sequel. Oh, yeah, he was the villain from the first game. He was the one who killed the main character and continued to uh, hunt her down in the dream, the nightmare world. And that's the main character there. Everyone's impaled on spikes and... All right. It seems like the Undead Syndrome took some kind of sci-fi twist at the end. Didn't see that coming, from what we played of the demo. It appears everyone has been quarantined. Except perhaps us. Yeah, lost three, past one. I guess we're the one who has passed the quarantine? Don't know what kind of test that was that we just passed, but considering that it seemed like everyone else just died, I guess it's a good thing. Though it would be nice if we could get that thing out of our back, I suppose. Oh, hey, that... How you doing? And it seems the thing on our back seems real heavy. Alright, we cannot use our key power in the reality. Does that mean that the place we were using it in the first demo was not reality? Maybe it was some kind of VR or something. Oh, they gave us the key power. These are, are our allies. Are they aliens? I don't know. Not too familiar with the extended lore of the Undead Syndrome. Now that seems like something to worry about. I think we should worry about that thing. That explains everything. Okay, I'm gonna assume that that's the end of the first game. I guess that the big twist at the end of the first game is showing up here. I can only guess this. Hmm, but who is the enemy? Okay, so we only have a short reprieve from the Nightmare World. So we're the one, I guess, is what they're saying. It 
sound effects in the Nightmare Sy Undead Syndrome as amazing as they ever were. Uh, all right, we're, we're playing, okay, and we're playing stuff that huge thing in our back, and it's kind of blocking the view. But okay, we're rocking around in this spaceship, everyone else is gone. I guess let's follow that alien friend, I suppose? Through the door, and... okay. Oh, and it looks like we are back in the in the other world, the nightmare world. Right, it's telling us how we can shoot key. We saw this in the first game's demo. Yep, kabam. This looks a lot like the the house we were in in the first demo. I wonder if it is actually the same house or jumping puzzle. Just trying Okay, yeah, okay, that's how we jump. Let's give this a try. Nope, that... Okay. Alright, we're downstairs. I guess we should look around. Except there's nowhere to look around. Let's just walk back upstairs. The Nightmare Syndrome we might remember. A master class in horror. N the Undead Syndrome 2 seems to be following in its footsteps. It seems to be just as effective. Alright, yeah, the merchants, which were just these orbs of energy, just floating there. And was that all there was over here? Uh, I guess. I guess we didn't actually need to go over there, then. But I can tell you that I feel the, the palpable tension from this game. It's just making me, you know, play it with one hand over my eyes. I don't really want to look at the screen, because what could, what could possibly be coming next? Do I want to know? Will I have to run away screaming from the video game? As we continue to journey through this, this place? could happen. But maybe that won't happen. Maybe the, the Undead Syndrome, I think, is probably more of the psychological brand of horror. And I can't can't seem to search that. Maybe I'm full up on, enemy, on uh, items or something. Uh, that's, oh, no. oh, man, these sound effects! They're pretty good! <laughs> Where did these? Where, where did the developers even get these sounds? I can't seem to go through there. I mean, a lot of people say Silent Hill 2 is the pinnacle of psychological horror. I think we can all agree the Undead Syndrome has one-upped it. I don't think there's much dispute there. No, I had... okay. Maybe that one chest was just locked. I didn't say it was locked, but... Um, I couldn't open it, but... Oh! Oh, goodness! Oh! Oh! The timing on that! Incredible! It's like the... You know, you're walking around, and the tension is just building and building, and then you see the monster for just an instant, and then the demo expires. I, I, that, that couldn't have been accidental. They must have just timed that exactly right so that by the time I would get to the, the enemy, the demo would expire. Mwah. Masterful, masterful. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I don't know how much you know about horror, but I'm quite the connoisseur. And, uh, the Undead Syndrome and the Undead Syndrome 2, really stand as unparalleled in this field. Um, so I would I would highly recommend checking out the Undead Syndrome 2. Because, whew, I, I will not be able to get to sleep tonight. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Next up this week is Stop the Zoid. 
we can play online, we can play offline. This seems to be primarily an online game. I don't think there's too much I can do offline, because you can see if I can, if I play this level, level one, the old Houston mine, here's this hostile droid approaching, we have to take it out. But I'm only playing one player, so there I am down there. We also have to defend the life force. Now, that... That transport... Uh, that transport is going to spawn loads of enemies that are going to try to attack this life force. And I think... It seems like the way this is supposed to go... Is... You have multiple... Uh, you have a team playing... Where some people will be defending the life force and others will be making attack runs on the transport. But since I'm only I'm only playing one play, one player, that's not going to go through too well. Another thing that's not going too well are the controls. I, you know, it might just be that I'm not used to it, but I have to say the the controls in this game are are genuinely frustrating. It's actually it's actually agitating me to try to play it. I was trying to play this before, and it's it's wow. It's uh mostly having to do with the motion and jumping. It's an interesting combination of when you start jumping, you have almost no momentum, and then halfway through the jump, you get too much momentum, and then you have to pull back so you don't fall off the platforms. And it, it, I really don't like playing this game. I just really don't like playing it. I mean, I don't want to sound too harsh on it, but wow, it's, it's wow. Trying to actually maneuver the character is incredibly frustrating. So you saw that I died. The, uh, the transport can kill me quite quickly. Just almost immediately, really. So, and I respawn right back at the life force. So again, I think that basically the idea is that you're supposed to have people defending this life force. You're supposed to have others going up to attack the drone, uh, the transport. And then... And then... You keep respawning, so as long as you're able to defend the life force from being destroyed, you should have as much time as you need to make as many attack runs on the transport as you need. At least that's the... I think that's what this is going for. Oh, I fell. Happened so easily. So, anyway, this game seems like it would be a much better thing to play with multiplayer. This does not seem to be made for single player, even though you can play it single player as I'm doing now, if you want to call this playing, which, uh, you might, you might not, you might not, and you'd be, you'd be right in saying it's not. It's just amazing trying to actually maneuver yourself up there. And you can see how much health the uh, the transport has, so one player alone is not going to be able to make much of a dent in that thing. Oh, they destroyed the life force. And that means I lose. Game over. Life force has been destroyed, and I am okay with that. Let's stop the Zoid. Maybe if you play it online, hey, maybe it's better. If you can play it multiplayer, maybe it's okay. Single player, though, it is an exercise in frustration. I would not, not recommend it in single player. Maybe multiplayer is okay. The next game up this week... ...is Gearhead. So we're playing a game called Gearhead, it has a car driving around on the title screen, so you can probably guess what kind of game this is. It's a side-scrolling platformer. Alright, we have to... ...get 25 parts to repair our car. We're stuck out here in the desert. And we can get either gears... ...or parts. I guess gears will probably count towards score, while the parts are what we actually need to repair the car. There's like a, a badger, I guess, and we killed it by stomping on it. There's also a lion, and I did the same. Oh, I lost that part. And we can't seem to get those parts back after we lose them either. I miss anything over here? No. We have a time limit. 
If we can't get all the parts in time, there's a camel. I suppose we could kill that too. Oh. So you can see, I guess, really the only difficulty there seems to be in this is when you release the parts. If you're not there to catch it, it just falls out of the level. Alright, let's stomp on a lion. And I probably should have gotten those gears before I destroyed those blocks. That's alright, it doesn't seem like the gears are all that important. It's the parts we need. Oh, I wonder if I might have screwed myself by missing that one part. I guess we'll find out once we get to the end. It can be rough stuck out in the desert. Your car broken down. You have to wander around the desert, hitting blocks with your head and stomping on wildlife to get the, gather the parts you need to repair your car. I mean, we've all been there one time or another. I missed another one. And uh, was that another one too? I d or maybe that was just the animation of the block just being broken? And maybe it was. Not sure. The music is quite cheery, considering the desperate situation we're in. So we're currently dying from dehydration in the middle of the desert. No one knows we're out here. We could die out here. No one would ever find us. You know how large... The American desert is? In areas like Arizona? How much mileage that covers? You could... I mean, some, you could... Pull a dead body out there and no one would... Ever find it. Oh, we have 25 parts and we... Our car is right here. We have fixed our car. Fortunately, it sounds like we had all the tools necessary to fix the car as well. You really should travel, you know, with with a uh, with the, th the sort of repair tools you'll need in your car in the trunk you never know when you might need something I mean sure you're not gonna have like a whole a whole mechanic shop full of tools back there or anything like that but you do want to have some some basic things that you could use if you ever break down or get a flat tire especially when it's out in the middle of the desert where there there's no one to help you. No matter how loud you might yell for help, no one's going to hear you. Why do you think I brought you out here? If you just paid if you paid me the money you owed me, it wouldn't have been necessary. Sound like I wanted to do it. Sound like I found it fun if that's what you think. I don't get my, my jollies. I don't get my kicks that way. But sometimes people take advantage of you, and sometimes it goes too far, and you have to do something to stop it. And you know people are going to ask questions, so you got to make sure that the answers to those questions are somewhere no one's ever going to find them. There's a sand fall. I died. Touching that sand fall. That, that'll happen, I guess. So that was... That was Gearhead. That was Gearhead. We're stuck out in the desert. Actually, why are we collecting parts to repair our car again? We already repaired it. Did it break down already? I think Gearhead should just buy a new car. Just bite the bullet. I know he likes his vintage, his vintage car, but... Just bite the bullet. Buy a new car. I mean, this is just ridiculous. It's breaking down over and over again and us having to keep doing this. Let's gearhead. The desert is a good place to kill someone. Next up this week is Flex. Does Flex look like Tetris to you? Yes, it does. What is... What's the twist in Flex? Well, I mean, we can rotate pieces. We can do that. However, we can also... change the, uh, the point of rotation with the left stick. We can move the pieces with the right stick. And, you know, we can decide which block we want to rotate around. The pieces are also very non-Tetris-like. And, honestly, as someone who has played a pretty good deal of Tetris, this game just kind of makes me anxious. Seeing these... These shapes that are just not meant to be. These abominations before Tetris. 
How can a loving god make these shapes happen? Obviously, Flex is evidence against the existence of the Divine. Also, the moving the pieces with the right stick is very sensitive. I mean, look how fast I'm moving that. So it's kind of difficult to be precise, which you need in a game like this. And it's also kind of hard to do that when you're trying to think about how you need to move around the rotation point to get the rotation that you need, and that's why I'm losing very badly right now. That's game over. And that's Flex. I'm not going to keep playing it, because honestly, like I said, honestly, it kind of makes me a little anxious to play it, because it is warping the laws of nature, and all that is good and moral for its own twisted ends. And I won't have it. I won't, I won't allow this to happen. But that's Flex. It's Tetris if you're kind of a, some kind of pervert or something, I don't know. I'm not here to judge. And the final game we have this week on Xbox Live Indie Games... Well, first we have to adjust the arrows until they touch the corner of our screen, which is right there. It's Deep, Navigators of the Dark. Uh, let's say no, let's start a new game. Deep stands for Deep Sea Extreme Environment Pilot. Well, this is a little different from what we've been seeing, because this is edutainment. Okay, I guess we'll just... Oh, what are the game designers? That's going a little slow. I can speed that up a little bit, I think. Wouldn't be a problem. Just wanted to see if it named an organization... ...here. Basically, the idea is... ...you... Well, I mean, let's just let's just start the game. It's not meant to be like a game in the traditional sense. It's meant to teach you about the deep and the exploration of such. It's the last true frontier on Earth. It is estimated that 95% of the ocean has yet to be explored. We invite you to explore the deep. And it will be explored. Explorer, you will pilot a remotely operated vehicle, also called an ROV. You will complete scientific missions by collecting samples, measurements, and photos in the deep sea. All right, we're selecting a mission, and I think we only have the one. Yeah, visit a virtual event. We could operate an ocean observatory or discover a deep sea coral. However, we have to unlock the game to get those. For the demo, however, we can visit a virtual event and be content with that. Uh, yeah, let's practice operating the ROV since, yeah, let's... Let's find out how we're supposed to do that. This tutorial will introduce you to the basic controls of the game. Mm -hmm. This is a waypoint. Following waypoints will help guide you to your next task. The number below the waypoint indicates the distance to that location. So it will point out where we're supposed to go. Using the left stick on the controller, Push forward to move the ROV toward the waypoint. Mm -hmm. Easily done. Good job. Thanks. You now have a waypoint located to your right. Use the right stick to rotate the ROV to the right to face the waypoint. Here I go. Rotate until the waypoint is in the center of the screen. Once centered, move toward the waypoint. Use both the left and right. Waypoints can be above and below the ROV. The left and right triggers adjust your altitude. The waypoint is below you. Use the left trigger to lo look at that Dumbo octopus in front of you. Let's take a picture of it. Oh, can we? Push, push the A button to take a picture. Select the objects in the frame with the A button. All right, so we have found an adorable Dumbo octopus, which is a real animal, in the deep, and we are going to take its photo without its consent. Use the flashlight to see objects in a limited distance. Use sonar to find hidden objects in the dark. Switch between the flashlight and sonar modes using the Y button. Mm -hmm. Use sonar to find the object in front of you. Move forward and switch to your flashlight when you're closer. Then switch to camera mode and take a picture of the object. That seems pretty close. Oh, look what it is. It has the most baffled face on right now. It's an eel pout. Eel pout. Be sure to take pictures of the objects you encounter to complete tasks and collect points. Be careful not to damage your ROV by colliding to objects. The health of your ROV is indicated in the bottom right of your screen. You are now ready to continue on your mission. I wonder if that's uh, how it actually works in real life. Do you have like this meter that tells you the percentage of health that the ROV has? 
Want to make sure it doesn't go down to zero? I guess that's the simplest way of showing it. All right, here we go with our first mission. Let's take a look at what our level objectives are. We have to find a high temperature vent, a low temperature vent, take a rock sample, take a temperature reading of over 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, those are our objectives. So it's not all about finding fish and taking their pictures, though that is adorable. No, it's also about. Dive planner, Danny. We mark two vent positions with waypoints. Make your way toward them, and I'll explain more when you get there. Sure thing, Danny. Good thing they mark these for us, because I don't know how we'd find them otherwise. We can see. A vent should be close by. Get your camera ready. I think we found it. Hold on, it's hey, above us. We got you out of drive. Try not smashing into everything you see. Oh, you don't like that, Danny? It's probably pretty expensive equipment, isn't it, Dan? All right, let's take our photograph. Seems like we should be taking a photo of that, though, huh? All right, let's take a photo right here, I guess. High temperature vents are often referred to as black smokers because of the appearance of the fluid they release. The superheated fluid is actually clear when it emerges from the vent, but immediately turns black when the metals and minerals in the fluid react with the very cold surrounding seawater. The result creates the deceptive visual effect that the vents are releasing plumes of black smoke. The hottest vent fluids ever measured from a black smoker were over 350 degrees Celsius, or nearly 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, Dan did not tell me there was going to be a quiz. Is this how it works in real life? Every time you complete an objective with the ROV, you're immediately quizzed about some aspect of it. Was that the bomb sound effect from Metroid? Are extremely hot, but we need to get a sample of over 300 degrees Celsius. Take a Dan... temperature probe and put it in the base of the smoke to find the highest reading. The ROV Dan... will take some damage. The best way to do this is to get in close, get the reading, and then get out as fast as you can. Stop changing the subject, Dan. Did you use a sound effect from a Nintendo game in this? Well, I think he's not answering, so... We've got to place our temperature probe above the vent opening until we get a temperature reading over 300 degrees, so... Let's get over there. It's going up. Let's see how close we have to be. No, oh, oh, our health's going down, but, but what about our temperature? Okay, we got it. And our, okay, I've almost destroyed the expensive piece of equipment. But we got, <laughs> I got a reading over 300 degrees, so I guess we're doing okay. Oh. That ROV is falling apart. We're going to have to stop. Yeah. You, ROV now. What's, what's the shoddy equipment you're giving me, Dan? It was falling apart when you, you gave it to me. How is anyone supposed to take temperature readings or take photos of fish with such shoddy equipment? I tell you, I did not go to marine biology school for this. Oh, our time's expired. So I guess I guess that was a blessing in one way. We were able to finish our mission before the time limit ran out. Well, we didn't really finish our mission, but at least we, at least we, I don't know, what did we do? We took a temperature reading of over 300 degrees for some reason. I don't know why, but that I guess is a game that is meant to be educational in the ways of the deep. And who knows what horrors might be found down there. I would assume that this is just going to lead to finding the great old ones, but you know, I don't know that for sure. But that's with the ending of Deep. That ends this week in Xbox Live Indie Games. Seven games. Do I really have to say what the game of the week was? It was obviously The Undead Syndrome 2, the game that makes us all feel that survival horror is alive and well in the world of video games. That's it for x this week. See you next week with more wonderful, beautiful indie games.